Hey guys, Frank here. Welcome in our studio. Today, something very special. But first, let me take a little bit of a drink. Yeah, there we go. Oh, hey, that's interesting. Why fake it when you can create it? That's actually not really something that we're going to do today. Okay, let me tell you something. Now, I'm a photographer that loves to do everything on set. So I love to build a set. I love to think about lighting. I, I like to think about the styling and the model. But in all honesty, sometimes you just can't build the set that you want. Sometimes you can't get the lighting that you want. For example, let's say we want to create a horror scene, right? So we have the perfect styling, we have the perfect backdrop, but you miss a little bit of lens flare, maybe a little bit of a castle in the back. And this is the part where we're going to talk about today. I'm going to do several videos where we're going to use Adobe Photoshop 2024, the new version, to add some special effects in your image. Now, I'm still the kind of photographer that wants to do everything as good as possible inside the camera. That's actually where the slogan comes from, why fake it when you can create it. So, let's open up an image and let's just see first what we can do in Photoshop. And afterwards, I'm going to use one of my favorite plugins of all time, and that's actually Boris FX Optics. Now, in Photoshop, you can do a lot, but I still think that on the set it's very important to have your lighting correct, your backdrop and everything, because that connects. But in Photoshop, you can add elements, but to really glue them together, to really make it interesting, that's where we're going to use Boris FX. So, let's open up an image. Let's start in Photoshop with the artificial intelligence and let's create some magic, or maybe we'll fail. We'll see. Okay guys, we have our shot with Jamila. Now, in my opinion, it's very important if you do stuff like this that you already choose your backdrop. So in this case, we have the Art Botanical from Click Backdrops and we're just gonna extend that and create a different area in which our Tomb Raider is trying to escape. So what I see in my mind's eye is actually some snakes on the floor, an extended backdrop, maybe a room where she's trying to escape towards the top where some lighting is hitting her, some spot effects, maybe some dust particles in the air. We're just going to try out what we can do. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my uh, area to the sides and I'm not going to type in anything in generative fill. Now, a lot of people think that you have to type in something. You don't. You just press generate. The only thing I want to tell you guys is what I'm doing now is not really smart. Photoshop works best if you do it in small areas. So this is a 60 megapixel file. And when I make Photoshop fill in those sites, it will not be the highest resolution. For that part, you really have to do it in smaller squares. But for the video, we're just going to create it like this and just see what Photoshop does. I'm very curious to see how it incorporates my backdrop into a new scene. And that looks really impressive. Wow. Let's try some more. You always have three options. And of course, you can generate more if you want. I don't like that one. Oh, this I really like. Okay, so let's keep this one. I'm going to flatten my image because we're recording video. Okay, and let's change the ceiling now. Um, let's do that with our rectangular marquee tool. Let's try to keep it a little bit around here. And let's do a stone ceiling. This is nice. This looks like she's really climbing out of it towards the light. Let's go for 100% because of course I have to take her whip back. Now for the video I'm not going to create the perfect image. I'm just going to do it a little bit rough. But you of course can do it much nicer at home. Okay, there we go. I think this is pretty cool. Now, we talked about this in the intro. It's very important to shoot everything on set as great as possible or as perfect as possible. And this is because there's always a connection between your model, the lighting and the backdrop. Now, of course, she has to be afraid of something. So let's create a bunch of snakes. Let's do the whole floor. Again, normally it's much better to do it in smaller areas. But I'm feeling adventurous today, so why not? Okay, a whole bunch of different snakes. Yeah, that's a huge snake. It's not really what I wanted. This is more like it. Okay, we've got enough snakes. You can add more if you want, of course. Let's do some spider webs. Okay. 
Okay, the problem with this one, I like it, but it's too bright. So you can always choose to tone down the opacity. Make it fit in a little bit better. There we go. I do think it's going to fall away when I'm going to do the later retouching. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra brightness. It is too bright now, but I know I'm going to darken that area in Boris Affix. So I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. Okay, for now I'm done in Photoshop. So let's jump into my favorite plugin to really glue everything together and give it its look. Let's go for Boris FX. Now Boris FX has just released a new version and they added a boatload of stuff. Now I'm not gonna show you everything that's new for the very simple reason, it's just too much and it doesn't fit sometimes. Of course, the image that I have in mind, I do wanna show you how I use Boris FX. And in all honesty, normally I try to get everything right on Set, but sometimes you miss a lens flare or you don't get it 100% right or you don't have snakes or you don't have spider webs and then the combination of Photoshop and Boris FX is absolutely amazing so let's start with the light coming from above I'm gonna add a lens flare I'm gonna add that exactly above her whip now this looks of course incredibly fake so let's try to get it a little bit nicer I actually think that this, oh, this looks really nice. The only thing is I don't really like this effect. And look at this, by the way, you can change whatever you want in Boris Fix, And that's what I like. It gives you so much creativity. So let's change that. And we call that the outer brightness. So if the hotspot brightness and the outer brightness, outer brightness is going to go to zero. Now, these beams are a little bit too sharp for my taste. So let's go for our blur and let's blur those lines. Here we go. There we go, I really like this. But now in all honesty, I think there should be more attention to my model. It's a little bit like, see, it doesn't really get me as movie lighting. Let's go for the spotlight. Now, drawing the eyes of the viewer is very, very important. And this is why in Boris FX, I love to use, for example, the spotlight effects, as you can see here. The spotlight effects really draws the attention of the viewer towards your object do make sure and that's the nice thing about boris fix you can control the outer lighting and the inner lighting separately do make sure that you still see enough of your surrounding areas because if you just make it pure black it just doesn't look right it looks great on the monitor by the way and that's why i wanted to address that separately sometimes when you retouch it looks great on your monitor because you see it and you go like wow i love that spot effect However, when you retouch the image to the final product and you put it online, you miss so much from the side areas and it just doesn't look right. So make sure that when you use the spotlights, you play with the inner and the outer brightness. And let's try to get a little bit of that effect in anyway. There we go. Now, of course, when we start using spotlights, we have to make sure that we know where the light is coming from. And the light is coming from above, right here. And maybe there's something on top that blocks the light. Maybe there isn't. You can change whatever you want. Now this big one, this supports where the light is coming from. So in this case, I want it all the way up because it's a huge area it has to cover. But I don't want to lose any direction of the light. So that's why I'm moving that light all the way to an insane height. There we go. Now this one controls the area where you move it. Now as you can see here, I'm still lighting a lot. So I'm going to actually spread it a little bit closer to my model. There we go. And then make it a lot softer. Change the spread again. And there we go. Okay. Let's turn that off and on. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. And you can see the spider webs. That's why I kept it a little bit brighter, because now they do look believable, because you can hardly see them. Okay, now, of course, within uh, Boris Affix, you can change everything you want. So, for example, now it looks a little bit too dark on the corners, right? So just take that lens flare layer and just place it on top. And there we go. That looks much better. Now, take out the spotlight. There we go. Look at this. This looks much nicer. Okay, now, of course, when we are working about, when we're talking about movie scenes, there's always that movie look, right? And Hollywood is very good in that. For example, in horror movies, we're going to do a video on that after this one. In horror movies, there's always this blue tint at night. But with Tomb Raider, 
I want to create something that's a little bit more, well, drawing the attention towards our model. And in this case, it's Jamila, by the way. So she did a great job with Tomb Raider. Um, let's go for Film Lab. And this is, I think, my favorite part in Boris FX. I don't really have a favorite part, but the tinting for me always brings in the, the mood of a shot. It really brings out what you want to show to the viewer. So let's see if we have some really nice stuff. Now, I always start out with film looks, so another, or sorry, film stocks. This is actually an emulation of film stocks, and sometimes this is enough. Sometimes you find something here, we go like, yeah, that's what, there we go, this is what I mean. Very nice. It's too much, so I'm gonna tone down the effect. There we go. So it should be very subtle. Nice, but it does give you that the drawing into the attention of the viewer, right? So let's lower that even more. Okay. So now that I have the film stock, I'm going to create another layer. And in this layer, I'm going to do actually the looks. And the looks is a little bit more for me how it is filtered in a movie. So it's not really like a film stock, but it's more like how do you tint an image in a movie to give it a certain mood. And that's always much more than film stock, as you can see here. These are much more extreme. And I mix them up. Sometimes I only use look, sometimes I only use film stock. It really depends. And you can stack them on top of each other. So yeah, there's no, there's no limit to what you can do in Boris. I'm just showing you some of the examples. Cool. Now, of course, when you're in an area like this, there's dust, right? So let's go into our dust creation. So we're gonna go for light. And there's this option called orbs. And this is one that I really love. And there's so much more than just orbs, by the way, because in orbs, you can create these kinds of stuff. It's not really what we want. You can create the over the top effect, but there's also something fine dust. And this is really nice for a scene like this. Look, it just looks like there's all this dust in that area. You can do it a little bit dreamy. That's not for this image. Dust that's out of focus. You can use then the prismum effect. I think fine dust really does it well. Uh, we can do randomness. Let's change that a little bit around. Again, it's like a movie where you just press stop where you like it, and uh, this is absolutely what I like. Okay, and then press apply. As you can see, a totally different image just by using Boris FX. Now, there are many, many more options in Boris FX, and I highly recommend you guys checking it out. I will leave a link below where you can order Boris FX. But overall, I think the combination of Photoshop, artificial intelligence, and Boris FX just opens up so many possibilities to create something that mimics exactly what you have in your mind. As you can see, it's not that difficult to do it. It's mostly your own creativity. And I hear a lot of you guys going like, artificial intelligence, it's gonna destroy photography, it's gonna destroy creativity. And yes, I agree. When you just type in text and something comes out that looks great, that's faking, and I don't like that at all. However, as you can see here, we are shooting it with the correct lighting. We're shooting it with the correct styling. We're shooting it with the correct pose and we're shooting it with the correct backdrop. So even if I don't do anything in Photoshop or Boris FX, the image is already something that looks great and that you can publish. By adding the elements in Photoshop, you are creating it yourself. I can't get 10 snakes, for example, to put in a, a Lara Croft image. But what I can do, is tell Photoshop exactly where I want those snakes. I can use the lasso tool, as you saw in the video. I can do so much more. I can create that little hole in the, in the top where she actually climbs to. So by adding that stuff, I don't really feel that I'm faking photography. I'm actually feeling that I'm now able to everything that I have in my mind to actually create the final shot. And let's be honest, we don't have a budget of 100,000 euros for a shot. We have to do it in the studio we have to do it as good as possible, and now we can create stuff that normally wasn't possible. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.